Hey y'all, welcome back. So in my last video, I told y'all how I got sentenced to them 10 years. And yesterday was my birthday, so that's why I have this balloon floating around. It's going to be my little helper today, as long as it don't get in my way. So now I'm going to tell y'all about when I first got into the Department of Corrections. So I was waiting to go to prison. Now, I know this might sound a little crazy, but I was ready to go to prison. Now, in the county jail, you're in a, a cell. They bring your food to you. They bring books to you for the library. Um, you get wrecked. I think it was like two or three times a week when you go out and it's like, it's a pretty good big size, but it's like cement walls all the way up. There's no equipment. There's no nothing. Like wreck is basically you get to go out and walk, exercise your legs, maybe run a little bit if you want to run. Um, and on the top, it's like a fence and it has like a net on top of it. I remember one time I got stuck out there while it was raining and it was the best feeling ever because I hadn't felt rain in so long. And it was the best feeling ever to be rained on. But that's where you go for wreck a few times a week. And you really don't have much movement. You don't really have much of anything to do. But from the people who came through the county jail, because like if you go to prison and you're fighting your case and you have to come back to court, you go back to the county jail to fight at your original court, whichever court sends you, you have to go back to that county. So there was people who came who was fighting the cases and everything. And it was like always restless, like I'm ready to go back to prison. And I used to be looking at them like something is definitely wrong with you if you're talking about you ready to go back to prison. But in prison, you have your quad or you have your dorm that you live in and you have to go outside for everything to go to canteen. You go outside to go to the library. You have to go outside to the library. You have to go outside to the child hall to eat. You get to go take trays and classes and you go out. So it's a lot bigger and it's like a community. So you get to venture out. You're not sitting in one spot. And since I have accepted that I have to do these 10 years and I've been sentenced, I'm ready to do my time more comfortable, more productive. I, I want to do things besides sit on my bunk and sleep all day and play spades because that's all we did in the county was sleep, eat, play spades, get up, repeat. I'm a beast on the space table, mind you. Yeah, don't play with me. I have people who like, oh, you think you good? Don't play with me. I can play two card spades and I can play one card spades. Whenever y'all ready, you know what I'm saying, for me to put it in your life, just let me know. So I was ready to go to prison and I got sentenced on the 7th of May and then I didn't end up leaving for prison until October the 1st. So they knock on your bed real early in the morning or they come in prison they knock on your bed in jail they you know knock on when they do their rounds they knock on your bed like you know get up so i'm up got to get that stuff together because when they come tell you it's time to pack up it's time to go you do not know when you're going for transport you know you're waiting and they have certain days where they do run so you try to map it out like maybe i'm going tomorrow Maybe I'm going, you know what I'm saying, next Monday or next Tuesday, depending on whenever they do their runs for where you're going. But you have no idea. They can't tell you, of course, because of security reasons. If you know when you're leaving, somebody could be there to try to break you out, help you escape, things like that. So you don't know. It's just a they wake you up and you're like, okay, it's time to go. So I pack up all my stuff and I'm like, I'm ready to go to prison. I'm ready to start the next part, get all I can get. So the transport, now mind you, which is probably part of the reason I don't like to drive or I don't really like being in vehicles because it just reminds me of being on those prison bus. So you have to get handcuffs and you get shackled. Now, anytime you get transported, you have to strip out. So you have to squat and cough. You have to take off all your clothes. They look in your mouth. So you have to open your mouth, lift your tongue. Like they are all up in there. They look in your ears. If you have your hair, like any type of way where you can conceal it, they'll make you take out your hair. They look all in your hair. They look under your armpits, under your breasts all up in your hoo-ha and in your your behind so to look up in there they make you squat and call so what you have to do is you have to spread your legs apart and then you have to bend over and they make you grab your butt cheeks so that they can see all the way in there and you have to cough not a little <laughs> you have to give them a hearty cough or they will have you sitting there coughing until they get a good enough cough so i've had officers who just make you sit there and keep coughing to the point my my throat is sore so after you've done it a few times and they make you squat and cough you go ahead and cough you ain't even trying to be there all day you go ahead and cough and it's not like they take you in a little room and just do you by yourself anybody who's getting shit with you y'all in the line and they going down the line so you're naked in front of these people and it is so weird to be naked in front of somebody who's fully clothed so weird so they strip you out you have all your stuff together and you have to be shackled and you have to be handcuffed while you're on this ride so i'm on the prison bus and it's like i'm just waiting i'm kind of tired but you're not really tired because you're anxious about where you're getting so i get to lowell which is in ocala 
it's in Ocala, Florida. And at the time I was coming through prison, that's where they did uh, R and O, which is receiving an orientation. So you go in there, it's the longest process ever. They got to process everything. It felt like I'm talking about in there for hours. You got to strip out again. They got to ask you your name. They got to take your weight. They got to take your height. They got to do, you got to go through medical. They ask you certain questions. If you have any restrictions, like you can't get on the top bunk. Um, if you have any medical history. So they go through all of this for all of y'all and you have to wait on everybody to get done. So it's like a complete different world because I'm in the county jail and I told you we are in one spot. They bring everything to you. So while I'm up here in medical, you see the inmates they have on blues and they're like walking around and they're like assisting the people and stuff. So I'm seeing how they get to move freely. So I'm like, okay, like this is a little weird because inmates is behind a door at all times. So after you get done with that, we was in there all morning. They give you your ID. They make you um, take out your hair and they make you wash it and all of that. Now, mind you, in my video on my TikTok, I talk about how the water trickles a little bit, but you have to wash it with like light shampoo um, to disinfect it. And they give you this much time to shower. So when you're locked up, you learn how to shower fast. Like I see posts about people and they're like, how long does it take you to take a shower? And I see people talking about, oh, it take me like an hour. It take me 30 minutes. You learn how to bathe really fast. I can bathe in whatever amount of time that you give me. Now, of course, <laughs> I'm not incarcerated. So I take my time in the shower, but even me taking my time in the shower, it doesn't compare to how long some people be in the shower. Cause I'm not in the shower 30 minutes. I've learned how to bathe like that. So it doesn't take me long, but unless I'm shaving and stuff like that. So they don't give you much time and they take your mug shot after they make you wet your hair. My hair was natural. So after I wet it, you know, it's like it shrivels up. It takes on all different kinds of shapes and everything. So they take the worst possible mug shot they can. Cause y'all could have took my mug shot before y'all made me wet this natural hair. So then after they do that, they get you a bed roll just enough for you to get to point a and point b so that you can make your bed because you still have to go to laundry and you get all your uniforms and everything they just give you one little set so that you can put on some clothes so then after you get done with that all of y'all have to walk the compound and you go to the rno dorm which they had us split out because there was no thing it's just an rno dorm so i ended up going to november dorm which it wasn't too bad because that was like the medical dorm that was well not necessarily medical but it seemed like it was medical because there was a lot of older people in there so i was grateful for that because i was in there with a lot of older people so it wasn't too chaotic and stuff so i remember walking down the walking down the 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 what the thing called the walkway to go to my dorm and mind you i was ready to come to prison i'm like i'm ready to go and as i'm walking it was like this wave of something that i have never experienced now i was fighting for my freedom i got sentenced to prison and all of this stuff i went through some up and down hills when i was in the county jail fighting for my life but there was something that came over me when i got to prison that it didn't it took it took years to live and i can't even say it was depression because i went through depression and that's not how it feels it was like a hopelessness like my life is over like it's a realization that i am nothing like i am nobody like you just feel like you're not a person anymore and it's like as I'm walking and you can see the looks on people's faces, you got some people talking to their friends and, you know, not necessarily laughing, but they look okay. And then you have other people who look like they don't have a soul that's walking. And it's like, you're just looking around and it's like, this is what I have to do for the next 10 years. And I was so down. Like I couldn't even, I can't even explain to y'all how I felt. And it's like tears just start falling out of my eyes. Now, mind you, I didn't cry when I got sentenced. I was ready to go to prison, but tears just start falling down my eyes. And I had like a knot in my throat. And I was, I've always been the type of person like, it is what it is. You know, I'm going to doubt. That ain't a small feat. That is not something you can just swallow. And I remember going in the dorm and like, everybody's just moving around. Like this is normal. And I'm sitting here like, my life is over. Like this is what my life has become. And I ended up making my bed. And that first night in prison, was the worst i could not sleep i could not sleep i was worried about if somebody was going to attack me i didn't have a lock because you have a locker under your bed and then you get a lock so that you can lock your stuff and it's a combination lock and only you can get in it 
I didn't have a lot. They don't give you that stuff. You have to buy those off a of canteen. So you have to wait until somebody gives you some money so that you can lock your stuff. So my stuff is open and I'm like, I don't know if somebody's going to attack me in my sleep. I don't know if somebody's going to try to steal my stuff. I don't know if they're going to hate me. I don't know if they're going to like me. I don't know if they're going to bully me. I've never been the type to be bullied, but this is things that go through your head because it's like, this not normal situations. This aren't, these aren't people that you know and people you grow up with. You don't know how they're going to take you. They might just hate you for whatever reason, or they might just love you. So all this stuff, I could not sleep. Every noise that I heard, I was like, uh, it was so cold and I was on a bunk and <clears throat> the person that slept under me, I love her. I'm not going to put her name on here because she's still incarcerated and it's not my business to tell her story, but I love her. I didn't know her at first and she has one leg, so she has a wheelchair. So I'm like, I don't know if this lady is miserable because she don't have a leg or what. Like, I don't know if she going to expect for me to help her. Like, but she was, she was amazing. She was, she has 35 years she had vehicular homicide. She was drinking and driving and she hit somebody, which is why I do not drink and drive to this day. You cannot drive me while you drunk. I do not play those games because that was the first person that I encountered. And she had 35 years and I don't even play with it. And there's so many people in there for that. And they be talking about how they drove drunk a thousand times and all it took was that one time. I don't play those type of games. But that was my first day in prison. Ooh, and it all went downhill before it went uphill from there.